Hey guys, I'm Allie, the owner of Burmerthy Candle Co. I just started this YouTube channel a little while ago, and I basically want to use this channel to share tips about candle making and purchasing candles. I'm going to kind of start with what exactly is in the candles on the market, because a lot of people don't know exactly what they're getting. It's not required to put on the label in most cases with U.S. candle making. You just don't have to put on there exactly what's in it. Ingredients are not required to be on there, exactly what kind of wax you use. We're going to get into that a little bit later, but before we get into anything else, on this channel, I need to talk about the great wax debate. You may or may not know this, but there's a huge debate surrounding wax and whether one is more toxic than the other. People have their different opinions on which wax to use. Some people prefer apricot, coconut, and beeswax. Some people just think that going soy or one of those is fine, but the majority of people you talk to who are interested in candles will tell you that paraffin wax is bad and toxic, while soy wax is a little bit better and then the other waxes are the best for you. We're gonna debunk that today. That's not necessarily true. We're gonna look at exactly what the content of the waxes is, how exactly they're made, and what the difference is in the making and burning process because there are differences all across the board that you don't really understand until you've actually made the candles yourself. If you're interested in candle making, if you just started a candle business, or if you're just interested in the daily life of owning a business as a teenager, then go ahead and click subscribe. I'm gonna be coming out with a lot more videos after this one, I promise I'm not lying this time, guys. I know if you've been watching my social media, I've been saying things are coming out for so long. I promise they finally are, but there are gonna be a lot more videos like this coming to my YouTube channel soon, so please do not forget to click subscribe and click the notification bell so that you know when they come out. This is just a good starting point if you're interested in candles because what a lot of people view as a foundation for your candle is the wax. Is that necessarily true? Personally, I don't think so. I think it has a lot more to do with the wick and the fragrance, which we're going to get to in later videos, but I'm going to start with the two main waxes that this debate is surrounding, soy and paraffin wax. So let's start with the debate between soy and paraffin wax, how they're made and what they initially start from, which is oil. All wax is going to start from some form of oil. The only wax that doesn't start out like that and is a wax in its natural form is beeswax. All the other waxes have to come in liquid form and go through a process of refining before they can actually become wax, which kind of dispels the first myth that some wax is organic. Wax doesn't grow on trees. The only kind of wax you can find that's even remotely like that, again, is beeswax. So if you're getting a candle and the label on it says that it's organic or it's marketed that way, Chances are there are other things they're lying about too because that is a flat out lie. You're not getting anything that is 100% organic unless it literally was picked off of a tree and there's no kind of wax that's like that except for beeswax. So first myth dispelled, no candle wax is actually organic besides beeswax, which even then is refined and treated just to be cleaned and to add fragrance oils to it. So that's not to say that because it's processed it's bad, but it is processed, so you can't really call it organic. Soy wax starts out as soybean oil, which is just a plant-derived oil from the soy plant. If you live in the South, you see these all the time. We have a field right by our house. It's basically just a plant, and so soy wax is vegan. You take the oil and you process it to make it harder, and basically it becomes a wax. Now with paraffin, it's a little bit different. Both start out as oils, but paraffin is extracted from oils underneath the earth otherwise known as crude oils. Now don't get your guns up as soon as I say crude oils. A lot of people are triggered by the words crude oils. They think it's bad and everything because it is not necessarily something you wanna ingest on a daily basis. Unfortunately, I'm here to tell you that if that's your concern, honey boo boo, it's not gonna be a candle that's gonna kill you. There are a lot of other things that we consume with crude oils in them, including the things that we breathe in on a daily basis. It's in sheetrock. It's even on the outside of some vegetables that we get from the grocery store. So really, if you're worried about that, then you need to place your worries elsewhere and eliminate a lot more things than just candles from your shopping cart. Basically what crude oils are is oils derived from plant and animal decay that takes place underneath the earth. They extract it from under the earth. They make a lot of different things out of it. And based on what they're making out of it, they take different byproducts and will send it to different places. It gets refined and then it gets used. So with paraffin wax, the wax actually comes from where they're processing the oil to make fuels. And the oil they use to make paraffin wax is basically the byproduct of that that they would be wasting, but they take and refine a little bit more and make it into wax. As far as refining goes, it is refined to the point that it is no longer dirty. In fact, it's deemed as clean for human consumption. If you've ever noticed a waxy coating on the outside of an apple or any other fruits and vegetables, etc., that is the wax I'm talking about. They take this paraffin wax, which has been refined from this oil and it is ultra refined. They use it for a plethora of different things and you really handle it on a daily basis in the films that you touch on the outside of, oh, by the way, cheese, the cheese that's like the little, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say the baby bell cheese, but those cheeses, those cheese rounds are coated in this wax too. 
So it really is a food grade wax. It's something that you handle on a daily basis. It's something that probably you've breathed in more than just from breathing it in from a candle. So it's not necessarily something that's bad. Paraffin wax, you're gonna see it in a lot of other places. Soy wax, you're not gonna see as much just because of the allergies that people have to it. But the bottom line is, neither one of them can necessarily be classified as toxic. Both are refined. The only real difference in how they're made is that soy wax is a little bit softer. So it actually has to go through a process called hydrogenation to make it even to the point where it's solid enough to burn. So both are processed about the same amount. Soy wax may even be processed a little bit more because again, it is an oil. Whereas with paraffin wax, by the time it's a byproduct, it's pretty much solidified, it's getting there. With soy wax, it's different because obviously it is an oil in its natural form and it has to be processed a good bit to be solid and in the end neither of them by ingesting or breathing in in small quantities is going to make you have any health issues that you wouldn't have otherwise for example soy wax if you're allergic to soy obviously you probably don't want to handle that but besides that you're really not going to have an issue with one more than the other okay so between soy and paraffin wax there isn't one that's more toxic than the other but what about the other waxes is there one that's better than the other one and is there really a difference between all of them the answer is yes there is a difference between all of them Different waxes pour differently, different waxes burn differently. They just have different consistencies. So apricot wax is gonna be a little bit softer. So is coconut wax than even soy. Soy wax is just a little bit harder, but it's not quite as hard as paraffin wax. And I've noticed that beeswax can be really hard, really difficult to work with actually, because it doesn't have a good scent throw, meaning that it doesn't absorb that fragrance oil well, and it just doesn't disperse it well enough. So a lot of people choose to go with soy wax. A lot of people choose paraffin because it does have a really good scent throw, even though it does have animal byproducts in it. So it's not technically vegan, but a lot of people do use soy, apricot, coconut, because the difference about them is that they're easy to work with. They're really high quality, which means they burn at a little bit of a slower rate, depending on how you wick the candle. If you wick the candle with something that burns really bright and really hot, for example, like a wood wick, you're gonna get a little bit of a faster burn, but especially with a normal wick and one of those natural waxes, you're gonna get a really long burn out of those, which a lot of people like. A lot of people use soy and paraffin and coconut for their candle waxes. None of them are worse than the other. It really is just personal preference of the candle maker and what they prefer to market. Because soy, apricot, and coconut wax, especially for those luxury candles, markets way better than paraffin wax, especially because of the false dichotomies the media has kind of created around paraffin wax. Now, I said all this about paraffin wax, but you still will see paraffin wax candles in the TJ Maxx checkout line. You may be wondering why people would even use paraffin wax, and the reason for that is largely because it does have a really good scent throw. So you're gonna get candles that burn a little bit faster. They are a little bit of a faster burn through, which some companies tend to like because they like the fact that it burns fast. You come back for another one. It's kind of like a sugar addiction because it is really good. It like has a really strong scent throw. And since it burns fast, you wanna come back. Like you wanna come back for more. So a lot of companies will use that. And you will see a lot of them, for example, in like the TJ Maxx checkout line. They get you with the candles there. Candles are often put there. The ones with the paraffin wax that smell really good but they may not say paraffin wax on them. Now this is where it gets confusing and a little sticky. I didn't realize this until I got into the industry a little bit later, but as I was studying candle making and how to make my labels, what exactly to put on them because I wanted to make sure it was exactly the right thing, I was reading through the rules and regulations and I found that you actually don't have to make your candles 100% soy wax to put soy wax on the label. You can put soy wax on virtually any candle, even if it has 1% soy wax in it, and you can put 100% soy wax on the label if it has over half soy wax in it. So if your candle has 51% or more soy wax in it, but the remainder is another kind of wax, you can still put 100% soy wax on the label. And if you have a candle that's just 1% soy wax and the rest of it's paraffin or the rest of it's coconut wax, you can still put soy wax on the candle if you want to. You can say soy wax as long as it doesn't say 100% unless it does have that 51% marker of soy wax in it. It's pretty sleazy and even as a person purchasing wax in bulk, a lot of the wax blends that you get aren't solely soy wax, aren't solely coconut wax or whatever you think you're getting. It's always a blend, which is why you have to be really, really careful whenever you're getting your wax that you know what you're getting, that you're in good communication with the person that you're buying it from. Because of the high burn through rate, because of the strong scents, a lot of the candles that you will get in that TJ Maxx checkout line are gonna be paraffin wax. Even if they say soy wax on them, even if they say whatever other kind of wax on them, 
they are most likely going to be mostly paraffin. They're going to burn through really fast. They're probably going to have a wick the size of a toothpick because those burn a little bit faster and you're just going to get a candle that in the end will burn through really fast. And in the end, it's really just not a high quality candle. When I researched this, I was honestly shocked and I was a little bit horrified because Obviously, they're not doing anything illegal by marketing candles this way, but especially because you'll purchase blends and they'll say 100% soy wax on them and you even think that you're making candles that are 100% soy wax. It is really hard to be honest and to actually know what you have in your candles, which is why I have always been really specific about where I purchase my wax from. I get it from a place here in Georgia so that I know it's coming from not that far. Also, because shipping is a lot better when you get stuff locally. So I get my wax from a place in Georgia. It's processed in California and I can date back exactly where it's processed, where they get the soy plants from. And I know that I'm getting something that's 100% soy wax. But whenever you get down to the TJ Maxx level, you are getting a little bit sketchy. Obviously the company making those candles is not doing anything illegal. However, as a new business owner and especially as a representative of Christ and as a Christian, I really don't want to do anything that's going to damage my integrity as a business owner. I have no intention of selling something to you guys that's just going to burn through really quick so that you'll come back to me for more. I want you guys to enjoy your experience with me, which is why I make sure to get 100% soy wax and I make sure that it comes from not only a clean, reliable source, but that it's coming from America. Because a lot of the things that we get from overseas Yes, they may be cheaper. Yes, they may be easier to get. There are a lot of waxes out there that are selling on Amazon that I could get in bulk. But because of the nature of how things get into our country, it is a little bit more sketchy knowing exactly what you're getting. And just in general, I live in a very farm heavy area. Agriculture is a big deal in Georgia. It's a big deal specifically in the South where I live. I see soy plants all the time. It's a tangible thing for me. I know exactly what it is. And I really have no aspiration to get something from farmers over in some other country and I could be supporting farmers here. Most of the farmers that I support are a little bit western of Georgia but I make sure that all of them are located in the U.S. because living in an agricultural town I get to see that a lot and I like supporting local farmers and really I just want to make sure that I'm marketing to you guys with integrity. So when you see on one of my candles that it's 100% soy wax you know you're getting a candle that's 100% soy wax. Okay, so you've got an overview on all the candle waxes and how they're made. They all stored as oils, they're refined, there isn't one that's specifically more toxic than the other. They're all just about the same. With that in mind, why would you purchase different candles for different reasons? And in the TJ Maxx situation, if you can't tell what you're getting anyway, why would you even worry about it? Well, the answer to that is they're not all the same. They're not all equal and it doesn't have as much to do with the wax as it does the fragrance and the wick. I know you may think I'm crazy by saying the wick has anything to do with it, but you have to think logically about the wick and it's what's actually burning. In the end, studies have shown that it's really difficult to breathe in wax that's burning because it's gonna be too dense for you to even inhale in the first place. What's not too dense for you to inhale? The fumes that the wick is creating, AKA the carbon, the fragrance oil that the wick is absorbing and burning. Those are the things in your candles that you need to be worried about. Not necessarily the wax because A, it's very difficult to figure out what wax you actually are dealing with in your candle. Unless you're buying from a very small provider, you know them, you can connect with them, you can go on their website and look at their, at their ingredients like ours. We have all of our ingredients listed on our website. You can go look at exactly what's in each one of our candles. But unless you get that, you really don't need to be worried about the wax. The fragrance oil and the wick is of utmost importance. And I'm going to share with you guys exactly how to audit what wick and what fragrance oil you're getting in your candles, whether you're getting one of mine, but you know what is in it. Or if you are looking at the TJ Maxx checkout line and you are in a rush and you kind of want to know, okay, what am I getting here? There are ways you can look at it and be able to tell if what you're getting is toxic or not. I'm going to share a lot about that in my following video. So if you're interested, Definitely don't forget to click subscribe before you go. Please drop any questions you have in the comments section. Some of you may have noticed that I left out what a lot of people talk about in the candle making industry, which is the black ring on the edge of your candle jar. It actually has very little to do with the wax. Again, the wax isn't what's burning, it's the wick. The carbon is coming from the wick burning, not from the wax because wax can't just magically create carbon. Um, it's as a result from the burning process. So I'm gonna be sharing more about that in the following videos. If you have any questions, please do drop them in the comments below. I am still small enough to where I answer my YouTube questions as soon as I get to them. So I will be answering those and I will be coming out with more videos very soon as we get into learning about exactly what is in the content of your candles, how you can gauge the toxicity and just living in the life of an 18 year old small business owner. All of the candles at Burnworthy are made 100% with US ingredients, US wax, U.S. fragrance oils, everything is made here in the United States because I'd like to make sure that I actually know where I'm getting my ingredients from. 
Everything is then hand curated and handmade by me. And I'm based in this cottage right here in the lovely land of Georgia. You can click on my site below to look at some of my candles and read some blog posts about some of the things we talked about today. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and TikTok where I'm making videos and stories almost every day of all the things that are going on in the business if you want to keep more of a close eye on what is going on with Burnworthy. I hope this video has been helpful. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.